What's up, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Virtual Sports Club. This is Season 4. Uh, this is game. Um, I Oh, you know what? I should have kept track of that. I lost track. Um, it's the next game. I think it's like game 11 and 12. Um, actually, hold on. I'll, I'll find that out for us right now. Um, it's my lack of due diligence. And that's an exciting way to start this out, I know. Um, anyway, yeah, so this is Season 4 of Virtual Sports Club, uh, we, which is a, pro, a thing we do at Icon. Um, we pick a video game that has the AI that it can play for all the different uh, sides, the different teams, the different fighters, whatever. People pick one, and then whoever wins in a single or double elimination bracket, well, then they get the prize bag. Um, in, in this case, uh, the prize bag is... Uh, well, it, uh, there's 100,000 upics, but that's actually like 160... Uh, 160,000 upics. I got. I had a couple donations. There's a prayer hands block explorer, some Chicago properties, some structure ornaments. So it's uh it's not too shabby. It's not too shabby. And I am seeing now that the last episode was uh, matches nine and ten. So we are on matches eleven and twelve. All right. So with that in mind, I'm gonna get this going. Um, we have playing today Barcelona. And Germany, uh, Germany is was picked by Kaiser Twelve and Barcelona by OIC Woods. Oh, and I'm here uh, with uh, with my co-host on many things, Cam. How you doing, Cam? I'm terrific. How you been? Not too bad. Not too bad. Just busy, busy, busy working on stuff, you know. All right. Come on, I've been having a little bit of lag with this game lately. It's got some sort of uh, update that takes forever to install that I just haven't yet. So I'm going to try to remember to do that after I'm done today. Come on. Come on. I don't care. I don't know why it always does this. Like, it, it is sure that you suck so much that no matter what you're doing, it's like, no, no, no. Um, we're pretty sure that you want to take a little time to practice. <laughs> We're pretty sure. I I wonder like, if everyone. the teams are that different where like you should be practicing in between. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Um I haven't like really actually played one of these games since like FIFA 97. Uh I I only use them for just like watching simulated matches. I think it's fun. Um yeah, I don't know if they actually play differently or not. I guess they've got at least like different skill levels, right? Because like that's a thing. I assume. I, I when I look at it, I assume it's kind of like Madden or any other sports game that you. Sh I mean, obviously the pieces are going to be a little bit different, but largely the gameplay should be the same, and they don't ask you to do that. Right. And I mean, yeah. Madden's an EA creation, so it's kind of weird that they... It just leads me to believe there's something extra to this that Madden doesn't have. What else? What else? We got, we got baseball games. Do they do they make you, like, uh, warm up with the pitcher? Um, I haven't played a baseball game since the early 2000s. Right, yeah. I, I have no idea. Well, who knows? Well, if the trend is your friend, every reason to believe... I don't know why we're getting just, uh... Here, well, he's got oh, he's a player to watch, that Moeller. Hey, it's Moeller! We've seen Moeller reference before. And when you do that, you leave space behind you, so it puts the defender in two minds. I, I, for a second, my head just went to, uh, X-Files, but... Oh, it's Mulder! Hey, Mulder! He, he retired yeah. from the FBI, he got a great career playing football, and uh, he's never been happier. Yeah, he decided that, you know what, the, sis the aliens, they can keep his sister. Oh, Germany scored! Well, Alright! Who was that? Uh, Kaiser? Oh, well, the, oh, it was a Kaiser. Mm -hmm. uh, he picked Germany, well, but you meant the player. Uh, <laughs> Goretzka. Way to go, Goretzka! from a young age to get in those sort of positions and never in any real doubt he'd finish that cool and composed cool and composed indeed way to go Groteska or well, Groetska I, I, I don't know how to 
Those G's, R's, O's, T's, and A's. I don't know, man. Obviously, when they go close up, you can you can tell it's a video game. But I like how like when it's further away and they do replays, like you can almost you almost can't mm. even tell you're watching a video. Oh, game. dude, have you seen the new like trailers and stuff for Call of Duty? I'm not even oh, like. Oh my god, I was watching one earlier and I was like, this is getting. Crazy. Yeah, it's scary. It's fucking scary. Like I'm not even all that into Call of Duty. Whatever, it's fun. I get it. I, I played a lot in college, but like. I, I've i never been like, oh, someone took a video in Amsterdam. Oh, that's a video game. Oh, I don't like that. I, yeah, too real. Too real. Uncanny Valley. Actually, it's, 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 it's beyond the Uncanny Valley. It's now like the Uncanny, like, uh, whatever the city they what they had in in, Am in, um, in the Matrix, the machine city. Like, it's like, it's beyond just a valley. The quality of pass needs to be a bit better. I'm wondering at what point, like, how much further do we have to come in animation where, like, you can't tell the difference? Like, five years, ten years, or are we, are we, is there still going to be something that's just off where we can tell? I don't know. I mean, I really don't know, because, I mean, I remember when The Matrix Reloaded came out, and it was amazing that Neo was a, they were able to do the CGI where Neo was doing the thing with all the different uh, Smiths, and you watch it now, and that scene is just garbage. It's garbage, but uh, at the time, I remember being just amazed. It is funny how, like, stuff looks, like, can look good for the time, and then it just does not age well. Yeah, I hear James Cameron's worried that Avatar uh, isn't going to, like, isn't going to hold up. Really? I mean, and, you know, with the with the advancements made, and it's like, that's, that's, well, frankly, that's the problem with the, when you go CGI instead of, instead of uh, 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 physical effects. Jurassic Park will never age. It just won't. No, it really, it, not the original Jurassic Park, because that's all animatronics, right? It was all uh, puppets, animatronics, physical props, uh, everything down to getting the, the glass of water to do the little dum dum dum. Uh, the way they did that was they tied a guitar, they attached a guitar string uh, to the underneath of the glass under the table and plucked it. Oh, wow, okay. Mm-hmm. But I mean, just that's a small example. But like, that's my point. Like, everything in that fucking movie is a physical effect, and so it, it has never had a problem aging. It looks as realistic now as it did then because it really is just what you're seeing, not what is. You know? No, that's fair. Well, it's kind of like you're not going to CGI a bloody knife. You know? You're going to just find a way to make a fake bloody knife that looks real. Anyway, uh, Germany, yeah, still in the lead. <laughs> Barcelona. I have no idea if, if, if uh, Germany should beat Barcelona. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, you know, country versus city, you think country's going to win, but um, I, I feel like I, uh, the cities are paid more, so I don't know. You know, I wonder that. Does, like, um... How does the pay work on the country level for, like, a capitalist versus a communist nation? I wonder, like, how much they get, like, if you're, like, in a communist nation. Like, you're not really necessarily paid in money, you're paid in perks. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Do you get to keep your medals? I'd assume. I mean, yeah. I'd... But, yeah, no, I guess you don't, you don't own them, right? And the, yeah, I mean, I don't mean to be whatever, but if if, if, the, if the concept is a lack of personal ownership, then um, <coughs> I don't know. I think any I think any of the large enough oh. communist nations that are really competing, competing in this stuff is really that weird communist capitalist kind of yep. where. Yep. They're communists with a really big black market. <laughs> I, and look, I'm not a fan of capitalism, just to be clear. Not a fan of capitalism. I know Oakland's a strange place for a fellow like me, but uh, it is what it is. <clears throat> oh, oh damn! Like one of the first things he just he tripped him! Alright, okay. What were you saying? I was gonna say like that your whole not like so not for um, capitalism like when like we first spoke you you're like I don't really believe in money and I was like, 
how does that like that like that immediately interested me like why is somebody in a money game not interested in money what's happening uh the game part of it um you know life's a game uh i don't believe in money but um i as a as a concept as a gameplay mechanic money's a lot of fun but i also realize that it's how people eat and so that's where i draw my lines it's it's silly that that yeah um so you know I just have fun with it. It was just cool because immediately I knew that, like, I was talking to somebody who was interested in this for, like, different reasons. Like, mm. most people are here for very similar reasons. Obviously, you have one-offs, and I think you're a good example of some, somebody who's n not here just for money. Like, and that's I am why when people say, like, well, if, if it's not about money, why would anyone be here? I'm like, there are people who put a shitload of effort into this that don't care if they make a dime. No, I'm 100% in this for uh, the community collaborations. Uh, I like to see things get built. No, I mean, you know, I'm not against money in terms of, like, uh, again, you know, I have a mortgage and stuff, so I acknowledge that I have to move bits of, of, of numbers around from one platform to another to make sure it turns into a rectangle that I can then make sure it keeps people from stealing my house away from me. I, again, it's it's all gameplay mechanics, however you however you put it. It's just the, <laughs> the the life version of the gameplay mechanics isn't as fun. Um but to that end, uh I, I that's why I like to just I like to leave myself little rainy day funds just lying around. <clears throat> and in a way, that's what Upland is as well. My Tilia, my Tilia balance is another is just one of several rainy day funds. If I ever need to, if there's ever something where you know a doctor is like, "Hey, we're in America, so give me more money," I can go to that. <clears throat> that's been something that's been kind of cool about just crypto and like just the way like asset classes are almost changing and stuff like. I'm not rich in any, but I do feel like I have, like, a bunch of little pockets and stuff, and, like, wa just watching how you can, like, grow in all these different areas besides just, like, really money, real estate, and gold yep. and silver. And, uh, it's just cool. It's different. Yep. Now, I don't know how anybody can go all in on that 100%. Um, uh, uh, like, that I, that would scare me. Um, that's one reason I've said, like, I could, I, could, I could win the lottery. I'm never leaving my job. Like, I, I, got, I got a steady paycheck and insurance. I... But the people that have that got in on crypto early and are able to and are able to just like they're able to see the whole the, everything in a totally different light. And I respect that. Oh, dude! If you got into uh, imagine if you like even if you weren't looking at it as like I'm currently rich, if you got into Bitcoin or Ethereum early, you can literally just come into every new project you feel like, play around at whatever real level you yep. want. Makes me wonder if that's what, score, if that's what happened to Abdullah. I I know for sure that's. I mean, I'm not gonna go naming names, but I know there's people in our community that like. It, they seem to have a lot of money here, but they're like, yeah, it was just a couple of Ethereum. Like, I, I, I bought a bunch back in the day. Yep. Just nonchalantly about it. They're like, yep. oh, yeah, no, I just had a bunch of old Ethereum, put it into Upland. Like, they, they're looking at Upland's entry as, like, their entry from their Ethereum buy-in whenever. So, like, exactly. this is a joke. No, it's like you've you know, you've heard people be like, oh, a dollar, uh, yeah, a thousand dollars to to them is like a nickel to us. And it's like, but, like, in, in crypto, yeah, it's like, <clears throat> you know, a, a million upics, or, you know, a, a, yeah, tossing in a couple of Ethereum, well, that's nothing. I mean, to them, that, 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 that's, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, it's a fascinating space to be in. Look forward to seeing it grow. Just like I look forward to seeing Barcelona's score grow as they try to get back in this game. Barcelona seems to do decent with like ball control, but they seem to fall apart once uh, Germany gets the ball on their side of the field. Yeah. Oh, oh, run! Get it in! Did he keep? Oh shit! It didn't go out. I thought that was going out for sure. I thought it was out. That. That questioned the referee. 
See this right here? That's why we can't trust AI to run things. All right. I find it actually kind of interesting watching some of like the offensive and midfield battles of soccer. Um, just be, I played soccer when I was pretty like early middle school, but I, I wasn't very fast. I was an okay defender, or whatever at that level. But like, it wasn't like a high enough level yet where they really start to try to teach you everything or like the overall of the game. They're just like, you're a defender, get good at this. Mm -hmm. So like, I really feel like my like perception of like how to even play soccer is super limited like i i really never had a reason to go beyond the field yeah no i got you my my experience in soccer is 90 percent on the losing side of a scrimmage um and and there's a good reason for that <laughs> there, there, there's a good reason for that so it breaks down to high school all right um you get to high school i i i, I go to soccer uh, we're doing conditioning in the summer and everything right <clears throat> and I am one of 13 incoming freshmen who apparently had all but me been playing together in competitive teams their entire lives. We were all state the first year. And then I just, I just did the math. I was like, you're all in my grade. I'm never going to play. And he's fired over the corner. Never. So, um, yeah, I rode the bench for four years, and in practice we would scrimmage JV versus varsity. We didn't actually have enough people to form a JV team, though, so we never got to play any JV games. Oh, uh, so you guys basically just had to be Varsity's bench. Yeah, we were, var we, we were Varsity's practice team. Like, it was... Oh, man. Like, it wasn't like... I'll say this, you know, it, it, it wasn't, like, humiliating or anything. Like, it wasn't like they were just like, oh, you guys... No, we, it, we just... We happened to have a disproportionately number of good players but not enough bad players to actually do a JV team so um yeah so uh they weren't like you know rude or anything but yeah you know you, you go through like you know a bunch of practices you know 30 40 practices and you're just constantly losing it's it's demoralizing I can imagine that. I was on a football team one year. We literally scored one touchdown that season. That was a tough season to want to get back out of the field. Yeah. You come across a group of 10-year-olds playing a pickup game, and you're like, hey, can I play? I want to be good. <laughs> Just by comparison. There's still enough time they can get in this, if, but um, they got to score. Like, or at least take more shots on goal in, you know, sometime. They have 42 minutes. I tell you what, man, I'm excited for this Roomba soccer. Are you really? Oh, hell yeah, I'm excited for it. Absolutely. Any type of gamification added to Upland that isn't treasure hunt based, I am here for. That's fair. Furthermore, it's a layer two game that we'll actually all be able to play. I'm willing to call racing as is a layered a, 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 a functional layer two application. I'm willing to call it that. But but I can't play it. So that hurts. I'm still in this weird space where, like, I'm excited for everything that happens as far as gameplay. But, like, I have games that I, like, if I'm looking for gameplay, I, I still go to. Like, I never joined Upland for really the gamified experience like that. Hmm. So, like, I'm still in this weird space where, like, these advancements happen. And, like, I feel like... I, I'm neither like as excited or as disappointed as I should be with some of this stuff. Well, if you, if if it's not what you're here for, then that makes sense. Actually, I mean, you're not you you would neither be elated nor disappointed. It doesn't affect you. It's not on your radar. Yeah, I get it. No, I know, but I know, but I also know that more gamified stuff, like do, like even if it doesn't directly impact my day to day, like mm -hmm. it is good for the community and stuff. Like, I, right. I gotta look at it. We got a better picture, I guess. Right, like, I mean, I'm sure you're happy that it's coming. It's just not something you're keeping track of. Like, oh, it's going to be here on this day? I got to try it out. Exactly. 
Oh, I'm I'm excited to try it out. Absolutely, day one. Like I I'm, yeah, very excited. But I mean, first of all, I I like soccer as a mechanic. Um, I'm a big fan of foosball. Uh, so you know, um, and what they and what what they've shown is basically uh, uh, just um, Rocket League, and I like Rocket League. So yeah, no, I'm here for that. I'm here to play it. I'm here to see how it works. I'm here to see how it allows for interaction between people. Um, I think it is a. I think it's a fantastic example of what should be a piece of a larger hub. If they're able to make that Roomba soccer half as fun as Rocket League, I think that's a huge success. And you know what? I think that's a very fair and reasonable goalpost. Half as fun as Rocket League. That's nothing. I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at. Rocket League is still around and going strong. Um, to speak of staying power. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I think that, yeah, that's that's what I hope to experience. I'm very Rocket curious League how the control really mechanics fun. are going to work on mobile versus PC. That's fair. Well, right now, can you race on mobile? Shit, I have no idea. I assume I have no idea, though, because I, I don't have a fucking car. <laughs> I don't... I, I mean, I know, from what I understand, I'm pretty sure you definitely can't through the app, but I wonder if you can, like, if you're using the mobile, like, web version on the, um, on your phone? I don't know. And as I've told you before, uh, um, you know, the way I do it, I, t I installed the mobile website as a, like, web app, and so I'd be able to test it out if I had a car. If they would just sell the damn jalopies. Hashtag, give us the jalopy. I want you to know, after you taught me that trick, I've been using that pretty much exclusively. In, mm. uh, like, it's not, like, so vastly different from just using Chrome. Obviously, like, it works the same, but just having, like, the app, like, look of it feels so much cleaner. Yep. Yeah, no, and the fact that you can see the USD, it feels, it feels like you're cheating. Yeah, I'm still, like, as I'm using it, like, I'm still, like, oh, I'm in the app, I can't do it. Oh, wait, no. Yep. <laughs> Let's go. Wait until, wait until you accidentally hit a notification that takes you to the app, and then you try and do something that it doesn't let you, and you're, you're so used to it, that you're like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm not in the app. Oh, I'm in the app. Oh. Oh, okay. Honestly, I, I can almost never click on the notifications anymore because I mm. hate opening up the app. Yeah. Um, I just, we, I've just left the app in so I know when stuff happens. <laughs> That's fair, yeah. Oh, man, at this point, Germany's just playing keep away. I think Kaiser's going to take this game. Yeah, Barcelona's struggling. They really have been. Like, they have had a hard time. Like, they're jet-lagged. It's with Gundogan. Just cutting off the supply. But um, no, I'm, I'm I'm excited to see any anything involving Layer Two. And as I've said before, this is because there's a lot of confusion with people about whether or not this game is going to be Layer One or Layer Two or what that even means. And I mean, to me, it seems straightforward. It's a layer two application because the layer is the environment. It's like it's like what console you're playing a game on. However, it's a first party application because it's an official upland like made or, or associated application. The same way that Sony has a division that makes their own games. Like so it's a first party, second layer. That's my interpretation. So so I don't, I guess at this point then, I don't believe um, or have any real reason to believe we'll ever have much more gamified experience than treasure hunting on Layer 1, right? Like, Layer 1 doesn't really even seem like it could handle very much gamified experience. I, okay, so I think, uh, I think that might depend on how you, on how you define gamified. Um, in, in terms of, like, like, like properly, fully fleshed out ga game, uh, yeah, you might be right. Um, I, I do think that we have room to see uh, uh, just just straight up more uh, mechanics introduced to Layer 1 and the mechanics already there be more really fleshed out. I mean, for instance, uh, travel. We know that we're going to get real world, you know, real world travel at some point. I don't know if you call that gamification, though. So, I mean, yeah. 
I guess it goes back to like how I kind of see layer one as like a gamified platform. I don't really see what you're doing on layer one as much of a game. I, mm. So to a degree, I guess that's probably going to come down to how we're defining games. Yep. Exactly. There's a, it's, a, it's a whole new space, so it's being defined as we go along. I don't think Upland saw, saw nodes happening at all. I think that threw them for a curve. And it's become one of the one of the defining points of this entire community. I like that they're referencing like specifically and trying to keep with node terminology through this Halloween mm -hmm. contest. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I as you know, I personally I don't care much for the term node. I, I prefer the term hoods, just a personal preference thing. But uh, no, I agree. Uh, it's node is the word that people use, so it is it is good, and it shows that Upland is paying attention and that they are receptive, that they are adopting that terminology. Hundred percent. It's a good sign. Yep. Do you think, um, just curious, like uh, Rocket League, do you think we'll be able to dress up our Roombas and stuff as you progress? I hope that that's going to be tied to the to the, uh, the the legits, to the football legits, the foot, or the soccer legit. See, this is why you don't do football followed by football. You're, I don't know how to refer to this shit. The FC Porter legits. I'm hopeful that, that it'll tie into to those legits in terms of uh, how the aesthetics look. Like, you got a player, right? So maybe you can make it his, his number on your Roomba. Whatever we have autographs. Oh, go ahead. So I definitely would like them to be able to implement the player stuff, but I also would like some of the weirder stuff too, I guess, that Rocket League offers. Like, Oh, for sure. 100%. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Kaiser. Um, need to go ahead and take OC Woods, OIC Woods out of here. All right. So that's going to leave us with Cam versus Sun God Temple, USA versus Argentina. Here we go. End the match. But yes, I agree. Uh, you know, um, Rocket League has a whole lot of fun stuff it, ha uh, it has going on for it. A bunch of little fun design elements, uh, you know, little quirks you can do. It'd be great if they added in that kind of thing. Um, you know, I mean, you know, especially little things like a llama. You Like, the llama is their trademark and everything. It's their mascot. They You should be able to apply a llama in some fashion to, like, everything in, in Upland that allows for customization. United States versus Argentina. Wow, those stats do not look very good. No 80s. <laughs> I'm really hoping for the soccer's version of Miracle right here. Right on. Well, we'll see. They're giving you a chance to practice, so, you know. Just stop. <laughs> I don't want to play. I want to watch. Man, it takes a lot of organizing to do that whole, like, uh, the... What are they just... Are they, they're just hold, holding up pieces of paper? Flags? What are those things? In the stands. Yeah, soccer fans are definitely... Uh, are they, they've got to be the most diehards, right? I, I got to think, yeah. Like, I know, like, that you got certain cities that like to think that their NFL team has, like, the most diehard fans. But... Oh, sure. Philadelphia thinks they have the most diehard everything. And, I mean, you know, 
to be fair, I do see some interesting pe some interesting pictures every time they win, but you know, West Virginia, we burn couches. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> that's what we that's what we do when our football teams win. We 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 take couches, we throw them into the stream, we set them on fire. I don't know why. So for specifically, it can't just be any fire. No, it's, it, it's couches. It it's a thing. Setting a couch on fire in West Virginia is a sign of celebration of your team winning. That's an interesting tradition. Yeah, hey, you tell me, man. I don't know. I don't do sports. I, I don't know. Just in general, I've always found the whole, whole like your team wins, let's go ride in the street thing, like kind of weird. Yeah, I'm like, well, now hold on, I'm confused. Do we riot when things are bad or when things are good? I may not be understanding what a riot is. I may have been rioting wrong before. Well, I guess they probably wouldn't consider themselves riding, but, like, I don't know, when you set cars on fire because your team won. Right, exactly. You once once you're that. committing arson, I think that's the line. I think, <laughs> I think once, once, once Molotov cocktails come into play, I think at that point it's a riot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Normally it gets the job done. Will it happen again today? Messi? Martinez. I'd be curious what the what, what what the stats are on rioting in warm Messi. cities versus cold cities. I wonder if weather has anything to do with I, it. Like they are already like cold and huddled together and drinking and amped up. Oh, like a death. I know. Oh, Argentina. Argentina. They gonna try? They have. Lost their golden opportunity. Potential danger. That's a shame. This looks promising. So I bet you, if you, I don't know, just based off of like what Martinez. makes sense, I bet you there's a higher prevalence of fires in uh, cold places. I mean, right. But from what I understand, just in hot places, people We're tend to snap quicker. Mmm. Yeah, I don't know. So maybe you get less fires, but more flipped cars. I don't know. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. That's how, that. how it evens out. <laughs> Argentina's done a decent well, job of, well. like, keep getting close to, you know, USA's box and stuff, but then they get there, it's kind of like they're just standing there with it, like, well, Sergeant. we're knocking, let us in, please. Let's see if we can generate some offense here. USA. Oh. Now see, he tried though. Oh. I'll give him that. He threw his leg out and he tried. Failed, but yeah. I thought, we were getting, I thought we were getting a real shot on goal there for a sec. He almost did. Instead, he got a shot on the other guy's shin. And scope for them to produce something exciting. Uh oh. Oh no! Oof. Argentina with the first goal scored by number 10, Messi. Oh, I didn't even know we were going up against Messi. Yep, yep. Well, you know what? You know why you didn't know? Because they're wearing camouflage on their jerseys. That's your problem. You can't see him. <laughs> see? See? I think the Invisible Man just shot that. Now, I am so clueless on soccer. Like, I know some of the biggest names. Like, and by some, I mean, like, three to five. But I don't even really know where they play. I just, I've heard the names enough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see, I know, uh, I know, uh, I know that Pele fellow. Uh, that Beckham fellow. That, uh, that Christian Ronaldo fellow. And uh, Mario, he had a soccer Weston game. McKinney. That's uh, that's about it. Mario soccer all stars. In case you're wondering, that's how I know that Mario played and soccer. He and the whole gang did that. It's a good game. It's fun. McKenzie. I think I really got Ronaldo, Possession Beckham, goals. Messi, and Pele. I think those are the only names that really makes mean anything to me. Martinez. 
Then me a ham, of course. But but I, I I played soccer. One of those one of those guys that was so good in my grade. Uh, uh, name was Messick, and uh, uh, and every time I see Messi in here, I in my brain I'm just like, wait, did Messick go pro? <laughs> And it's like, no, no. Because my next question, of course, is going to be, in Argentina? I need to call him up. Oh. Passing. Curious, have you seen uh, or have you been following the DJ Short saga the last few days? No, what the hell is going on? I see his name thrown around a little bit and I have no clue what's going on. I really encourage you after this to take like a half an hour and just go through his most recent shorts. He's been putting up like every day, like three to five videos, maybe not quite that much, but like close to that for the last few days, just these shorts. Um, anywhere from like 10 seconds to a minute and they're just all weird and rambly and like he's selling his account but then he's crapping on Upland and then he's got this weird like diss track that's aimed at somebody but won't name the name and I, I don't know like alright I'm sorry a buddy if you're putting a out a diss track I'm immediately losing respect for you in terms of like being like a, making serious business decisions well, like, the biggest thing, like, uh, um, you know, all other things aside, is, is it drugs, is it a mental health break, or is he just trolling, all that aside, I don't understand his position right now in crapping on Upland while also trying to <clears throat> convince somebody to buy out his whole account. Like, it does seem counterintuitive. Yeah, like, either, you know, try to real, like, actually sell your account, you know, save the money that you're trying to, because you believe this thing's dying, or go full evil and, dis like, mm -hmm. destroy floors, keep crapping on Upland, do whatever you can to, to hurt it, if that's the way you want to go. I just, you're... You're being ineffective in both ways right now. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand. No, yeah, if the goal is to make money, then the, 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 then the additional uh, uh, effort of, of, uh, of, of, smear, of smearing is um, it's, it, it's, uh, irrational. It will, it will make you less money. So really the question there is, yeah, why the irrationality? Um, and, of course, why are people irrational? There's a myriad of reasons. Who knows? But no, I guarantee if even if you don't try to go and find the reasoning, just no, I'll give him a look. Yeah, no, I'll check it out. Watch. For sure, for sure. <laughs> All right, it's still a close game, but um, <clears throat> I don't think you're gonna get back into it this half, Cam. I think uh, I think you're gonna be going into the second half down a point. I can live with that. Hey, if we can lose, and if we can lose, but lose less bad than Barcelona did, I'll take it. That's fair. That's fair. It's a good, it's a good standard, a good, a good bar to hold yourself to. Well, that way I can at least, you know, it's not a true test, but I can at least just look at it and be like, well, on ah, paper, we're not. Well, they did just score again on you. They heard you talking. Yeah, and they said, not... Oh, so is that a challenge? Is, is that what we have to live up to? Comparing us to Barcelona? That yeah. was your problem. You compared them to Barcelona. Now they're mad. Just for that, I'm going to lose by at least three now. Yeah, yeah. Well, here we see it again. Some lovely quality passes. Fluid as you like. And he chooses to use power in the finish. Not much chance for the keeper when it's hit that hard. Uh, yeah. Not a good day for, for the keeper because, you know, he's all the way on the other side of the goal. He runs, he dives, but he misses and probably has a headache from hitting his head. Second goal for them here. Yeah, right now with the with the, how things are going with Upland, I don't know. Like I, I, I can understand. Like I, 
in some ways things are a little more frustrating than ever but I don't I I, I don't think that um, rarely have I ever been more up optimistic about the just like general long-term growth when you look at what's happening with Upland on a relatively frequent basis oh oh is Argentina gonna get another goal nope goes wide but on a relatively frequent basis, you're seeing you are seeing announcements, events, contests, uh, sales, promotions, partnerships, activity. You are seeing activity and expansion from Upland on a relatively frequent basis. And because you have people looking at the data, because all the data is available at the blockchain and everything, you're also able to see that like things are thing transactions are taking place like between people. Like it it doesn't track feel like. I don't understand how this looks bad as an investment. To be completely honest, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not that concerned with the down in the markets. The markets were popping, and that's what happens. Markets pop, and then they cool off. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, even in like what people are considering to be terrible releases if you play smart and don't just assume that you can sell resell anything just like if i go into a walmart i can't pick everything off of the shelf and resell it mm -hmm. some things you have to want to buy it because you want it and if you're mm -hmm. buying it to resell it that was just a bad purchase yeah yeah and i mean there's some there's something to be said too in terms of like it, it, people think like it's, it'd be impossible to actually sell out your whole account and this and the other and it's like not 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 really the the question is time in what amount of time and in terms of making a profit on things wait till the next crypto bull and then i i guarantee you you will not be seeing these usd floors of 50 60 percent we reach another crypto bull market and i think everything's going to be at least floor of mint no, I definitely agree with that. Um, you don't I, have to I make a profit on every point. single property. So far, and now the half no. Is if, you, like, if your goal is there straight up just to cash out with a profit, you know, that doesn't mean turn a profit on every single property. That means to turn a profit on your account. That's what I try to explain to people, too, and they really don't want to hear that. Like, I have taken egregious L's if you look at individual sales. Mm -hmm. But I like there are plenty of times I bought that property because Stop I got a 3, 4x return in Upix. So if mm -hmm. I sell it at 50% USD, it doesn't matter. Yep. Oh, I've recently been, um, it just hit me all the burners that I bought through through Mossy's Upix, uh, Upix um, uh, or not Upix, uh, uh, Spark Exchange. Um, I have no use for, and I've already gotten my value out of them. I got the spark, so I've just been fire sailing them at the floor of the USD. I don't care if it's sixty percent of mint. I didn't. I already got my value out of them. I'm getting extra from my perspective. What the hell am I doing with the Detroit property? Yeah, I'll take three bucks. No, I did. I. I largely did the same thing with my Spark Exchange properties. Like I bought that yeah. just to deposit money, so. That, you know, that's an easy way to make a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there, let that build up. And then either I cash it out or I buy a property or asset that I wanted to buy USD. I mean, my previous mindset was that those burners were a sunk cost and that maybe I'd be able to use them in the future as burners. And they just hit me one day. I was like, well, shit, I can just cash them out. Like, yeah. So the way I, what I do is I pretend I pretend that it's like it's like a criminal operation like we stole diamonds and whatnot right and so like you're selling them to get like fifty cents on the dollar because they're burners anyway you know we already did the thing ooh that's a third for Argentina come on guys uh, let's let's keep our loss to down by two I don't, think, I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna. I think this might be two shutouts this week. It might be. This has been this has been a week of one-sided games. For sure.
but yeah, um, uh, uh, going back to the uh, the Roomba, f uh, the, the the Roomba soccer. Um, one reason I'm very very curious on how the control mechanics are going to work for mobile versus PC is because if I understand correctly, isn't this going to be the first one where people are going to be able to put in their upics and win and win like a prize pool? This is looking rather comfortable for them. Three nil. No, that's definitely going to be interesting. Um, especially too, as a lot of these layer two stuff comes out like i mean even if like some of it's uh, not all of it's mobile accessible uh i mean i don't expect it to all be but i mean this is a mobile first game right Sergeant. so like i would assume the layer two should probably try their best to fall in line with that yeah uh the the couple of projects that i'm working on for layer two that i'm absolutely going with a mobile first mindset i mean like once i have them more fully uh um like built out and functional on a mobile then then i'll go and look at the desktop design and see about spreading them out for that but yeah no i'm i'm uh because also if you go desktop it can be if you go desktop first it can be way too easy to get things working and then when you actually go to make it for a mobile user interface because of the lack of screen space you put you box yourself in so much but if you go from mobile first then you've got nothing but room to move when you go desktop Pulisic now. He has time to play it over. Pulisic. I could totally see too, like just like really a lot of things that are mobile, the both mobile and desktop. There being more advanced functions on desktop stuff, but you gotta have a playable product on mobile. Well, and, that, and, and that's where specifically for the Roomba Soccer one, in my opinion, uh, if there's gonna be any sort of Upex payout, then they need to they need to like nerf the desktop one. Um, if that's necessary, in terms of like they need to make it, um, like where you don't have an advantage by playing on PC. No, a hundred percent. Because I mean, even largely, like I play Fortnite, which is completely cross-platform. Yeah. But I mean, if I'm coming up against the same, like if I come up against somebody who's the same, even the same level as me on a PC, oh. they should oh. most every time. Yeah. No. Uh, I know what you're saying. Absolutely genius. Well, that's what I mean. A majority of Upland's player base is playing it on mobile. So if you give the minority a disproportionate advantage, like you, you're you're literally just like messing with yeah, the average player. And they will make the change now. So I'm very hopeful for it. Mm. We don't ha uh, we don't have an ETA on it, do we? Just like ho hopefully sometime this quarter. Yeah, I think that's largely it. Well, over it comes. Pulls it back. Well, they did have the ball, but not anymore. Taglia I'm curious um, if uh, if they're gonna like maintain that every that layer two application has game. to be accessed through a dev shop, because th there have been a lot. Of, there, have, I mean, I, I've talked with several people who have talked about the idea of like once we have cars, what about like a layer two car radio? But if you have to access layer two through a dev shop, then it kills any sort of. Um, any sort of layer 2 application that doesn't revolve around going to a location. I'm wondering how many of these like dev shops are going to have or be allowed to have like businesses in multiple cities to kind of circumvent a lot of that travel stuff. I know that a lot of projects right now mm -hmm. are at least trying to tr like minimize like having to travel all the way across country and make it like just train rides away but mm -hmm. i'm assuming that you know the more accessible your project is the better you're gonna do oh but no but that's 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 my point like even if you have if you have a, a shop in every single city someone's out of sins they're not using it now if they if they switched on over to like a real travel mechanic then then that becomes a little easier but 
Um, but it's still there. If you have to go somewhere to you, if you if you have to drive somewhere to listen to a car radio, but you you can't keep listening to it once you you know what I'm saying like kind of breaks the immersion. Car radio. Hmm. Hey, why not, man? You can listen to you can listen to you can listen to DJ Shorts give you the lowdown on everything happening. <laughs> but seriously, you can we can hear his his new single, Fake Flexin'. Right. But seriously, Upland Radio could be a um uh, it could it could host uh, the I mean, so many different player groups are hosting live events at vi at various different times. They could host them on the radio for other Uplanders to listen to while they're in the game. As an example. We've also got lots of musicians in the community. They might make their own music, try and get their name out there. There's any number of reasons. Would the radio stations be global in Upland, or does San Francisco have its own stations? I don't know. And this is the kind of thing where it's like it, 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 it all becomes moot unless you, can, unless you allow for there to be layer two uh, within... Um, like within the car, like you don't have to go to a shop to to initiate it. So you're saying like pick up layer twos in more spots almost than just the dev shop. I'm saying there should be a specialized type of layer two application that can be accessible from like within the profile menu. Got you. Like, imagine if in order to stake Spark to your property you had to send to your property no you don't have to do that because your, sp your spark's just there oh dude that would change a lot honestly yeah actually now I as i say it out loud that's not the worst idea um that would be an interesting mechanic well i mean you got people like myself personally like i'm pretty I don't want to say vested, but I'm pretty like in San Fran almost always, just because that's where I do my general hunting. Um, it's got enough BE shops and enough business, like it just makes sense for me to pretty much be there. Mm -hmm. But I don't really develop San Fran. Like I, I buy cheap structures if I can to fill my net, but I'm not building up San Fran. And I'm not making real gameplay France plans for San Fran. I'm there almost exclusively for treasure hunting. Yeah. So, but if I had to put my spark where I am, I, I'd would be in a whole other city. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to suggest it too hard because I'm I'm, I'm friends with uh, with with various different Spark uh, uh, communities, and um, I think they would all send out the torches and pitchforks if this uh, got seriously considered. <laughs> you imagine what would happen with the people that, that that rent out their Spark if they had to actually go place to place. That would become super interesting, though, and much more real world, because if you think about yeah. Spark as workers, you're not going to hire a general contractor in Cleveland for the same price as you are in right. New York City. Uh, I, I can I, I also, I think that, yeah, we would definitely see a, a, a rise in the price of Spark on the rental market. Inside the final five minutes now. Well, you'd have differentiated markets everywhere. I think you yeah. would get, like... You would have people who would be banking on, you know, discounted building rates and, like, let me try to find a reason to go build in Cleveland or yeah. name your city. Damn, you know what, um, yeah, the but more... Then, you know, this might be a good idea. We should, I might put this in feedback and just risk the... There's definitely going to be backlashes. Some yeah. people are not going to like that as it increases friction. But, I mean, some of the more interesting elements of the game are literally the increased fr friction portions. Yeah, no, it's like fast travel in games. Yeah, it's a great mechanic until you realize that you're missing all of the nuance of the fucking game. I don't use fast travel if I can help it. Well, I mean, in those huge open world MMOs and stuff, like, why would you want to? No, I, cause they, like, I get, because well, people I get, want, right, they want to get to the, to get to the next step but of the like, quest. No, I'm with, yeah. Yeah, so I guess that, that that's a bad question. Why would you want to? But it largely, like... Dude, these game devs took years putting yep. all this intricate work into, like, just the tree line over here, and you're not yep. seeing any of that. 
Oh, I like to just straight up pretend and stuff. Uh, in in um. In my favorite MMO, Project Gorgon, I got a character named Scooby-Doo. And um, the first skill that you're supposed to learn in the game is teleportation. Um, and I, I, I've i got over 100 hours in this character. Got all, you know, maxed out a few skills. Never learned teleportation. Refused to. Because I, I like to pretend that he's scared of portals. Won't go near him. <laughs> but that means that I pretty, that pretty much like all forms of fast travel I, I can't use. And I love it. I love the extra step it makes me take. Well, Cam, I don't think you're going to make it. You got extra time? Well, you got, you got about 30 more seconds of extra time. And Argentina has the ball. Yeah. Come on, guys. Like, Are you fucking kidding me? Is he going to get... Oh, no. All right. Oh, man. But he got one final shot on goal. Oh, man. Oh, that was brutal. This was the week of shutouts, man. You said it. You said it. Well, Cam, I'm sorry. Can we check that out real quick? Can you see the stats as to what the shots on goals were? Uh, yeah. Should, anyway. Uh, match facts. Here we go, yeah. Um, Argentina had five shots on target. United States only had two. And Argentina had six shots... Oh. Apparently, they decided we didn't need to know all that much. Argentina had six shots, and the United States had four. Um, wow, so Argentina was pretty... I mean, shots on target, five, shots, six, depending on how you want to look at that. Yeah, 50, you know what it was? Accuracy. It was the shot accuracy. Look at that. U.S. had 50% accuracy on their shots. Argentina had 83. Y'all just took bad shots. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, congratulations, Sun God Temple. You are moving forward. And, um, yeah, that's going to do it for, for this week of Virtual Sports Club. Uh, tune in again in two more weeks, or, no, three more weeks, because next, yeah, because next week is going to be, uh, we're going to have a Halloween party. I need to make a flyer for it. Um, and then the week after that is uh, probably going to be the podcast. Yeah, the week after that's the podcast. I've got a whole schedule, and I'm alternating, you know, but uh, that'll do it. Um, until then, uh, have a good one and be safe out there. See you later, Cam. Later, Scoop.